company. company. We're, having We're having some technical, technical issues, issues for this first go round. Where's the link? Because, because Google, Google is fighting. Is fighting. Me. Um, um, hold on. Hold on. Because, because this, this link, link process. process. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Maybe we're live. <laughs> live. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. Jamie's, Jamie's having, having the most technical of technical difficulties. <laughs> Can someone Can find the blessed, blessed link? link? We're just gonna call this practice <laughs> run. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found it! I think. Shout out! I'm trying! It's in the bottom corner of your screen! No, it's not! It's not on mine. You should probably put it in a hangout. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, if I can get it to let me copy it. Because if you hover over the word links, that's where the link is. That's really special. Thankfully, we will also be able to share this as a video. Yes, so I'm yeah. dropping it in the chat, and I will drop it on Twitter. Okay, um, if you can, you can drop, drop it in the hangout, hangout chat. I did drop I did it in the hangout, hangout chat. chat. For some For reason, there are two separate, separate hangout, hangout chats. Chat. There's one that's in the in actually in. Ah, I can trip it. There's another. Okay, I. <laughs> we're never doing this again. <laughs> yes, we <laughs> are. <laughs> yes, we are. And can you reinvite Danielle? I can try if it'll let me, because it sucks. Okay, how about this? Can you see that? No. Yep, yeah, there's two different chats. Well, I just dropped the link um, on Twitter. We have two viewers. We appreciate you, dear two viewers. <laughs> Hi! Thank you for hanging in there. <laughs> Thank you for your support. And it, the struggle is real. The it's struggle look, is real. So when we planned this, Google was not in the process of apparently taking a crap in the middle of the <laughs> bed. Tonight, <laughs> Google is like, your couch. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is fine. You know why this is fine? Because we're learning. Right? We're brand new. Yeah, yeah, this is our first time doing this. I now know that Google has never liked me. Not really. Never, ever. Oh, wow. Hey, did you know you can play with your lighting settings? I didn't know that. No. How do you do that? So, so under the word live, <laughs> there's a there's little, a little magic, magic wand. wand. Click, there. Click there. I don't have a magic wand. I just see live. Do you have director turned on? Or cameraman? Okay, there's a I bunch just... of apps. What are... um, hold on one second. Well, we have nine viewers. This is going to be. We have to start talking. Right, yeah. let's just talk about Renisha while we figure out the technology quietly. Dear and also, viewers, sorry. <laughs> please read my shrug. We made this great plan. Yeah. And Google's not going to cooperate with us. We yeah. wanted it to, but Google is like, ha ha, suffer. <laughs> I think it did this on purpose. Probably. Who? Who failed, Who failed to sacrifice a goat to the Google gods? <laughs> <laughs> How do we get struggling? I'm trying yes. to figure this out because I invited her, but that doesn't seem to matter. No. Nah. Google does what it wants, really. All right. Look, let's talk about Renisha, and then we'll come back to face this pain in a second. Because I think we've all spent... A significant portion of today, if we were on the Twitters, we were on the Twitters, telling people, telling people to go straight to hell about Renisha. At least I did. Um, I have seen more black men insist that 
this is an this isolated is an incident, incident, and tell and us tell that us feminism, feminism is doing it wrong. Doing it wrong. <sighs> I have seen I've more seen white women, women tell, tell people, people that we that shouldn't, we shouldn't value, value femininity, femininity, delicacy, or you know, whatever else was being said in the true dimension. <gasps> Because her mentor made, made you want to reach through the screen. screen. So, so as, as we're having this moment about, about what happened to Renisha, what happened, what happened to Rakia Boyd, Boyd, what happened, what happened to Catherine Johnston, Johnson, what happened to Ayana, it, it feels like we keep like having this, this it's, it's an isolated, isolated incident conversation, conversation far too far often. Too so... We know it's we know not isolated. isolated. We know that oh, black, black women, women are, being are being victimized by violence. By violence. We're part of those part stats of by extrajudicial murder, murder in America. In America. Yet, Yet, we're not really, really recognized, recognized in the same, in the same way, way that, that black, black men, are. men are. And we're and not really discussed in the context, in the context of, of we are not, not real, real women, women in the eyes, in the eyes of some. Of some. Because of skin color. color. And the problems that that causes causes for us. us. Because we're not seeing seeing the same same turnout turnout for Anisha, Anisha, despite the fact fact that she was 19, 19, 19, that we got for Don 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 Carroll, never mind mind for Trayvon Trayvon Martin. Martin. Now, first and foremost, hi, I'm Sadat, Black Amazon. Let's talk. I want to talk about the idea that nobody wants to exert effort. A good part, a huge part of our original mentions was people were like, where is the link? And how do I find this? And I can't find this. And I'm just sitting there going, don't ever, if you want to like humanity and like the people who claim to lead any of your movements, check anybody who doesn't know how to Google's bio information. Because I saw people who are foundation and fellowship havers and editors of magazines going, well, I don't know, why are you angry? And that's a, that right there is the perfect encapsulation of the problem. When it comes to black women on both sides, nobody really wants to exert effort. There's a constant belief that we have to justify them getting out of bed in the morning for us in any way. And no one wants to talk about this or everyone runs away from the conversation when it's consistently pointed out that this is happening. Because if you start to look at how Kimberly Crenshaw, intersectionality, how that positions us at specific points of consistently receiving both and, it's not just, oh, I sit at the center of intersectionality and I have problems for being a woman and I have problems for being black, but I have problems for being a woman, I have problems for being black, and then I get a whole nother set of issues that are only connected to the fact that I am a black woman. Nobody wants to have that conversation because nobody gets to have that expertise but black women. And right now, especially in terms of Twitter and things like that, we are working on an economy of expertise. Well, and how we're defining expertise matters. you know, because I find myself in these conversations where, because I don't necessarily, I don't have a women's studies degree. I have degrees. I'm one of those black girls or whatever. But I find myself in these conversations where I bring up and I bring up, bring up sociology and all this other context, and it hasn't been put in a women's studies framework in the same way. Right? Because, and I'm not, not at all demeaning what Audre Lorde or Bell Hooks did or said. Patricia Hill Patricia Collins, Collins, Kimberly Crenshaw, Crenshaw, all of these all things were happening. They were done. done. They matter. They matter. But, but we are we other. Are other. Even, even so. so. And especially, especially in women's, women's studies, studies, they will they happily, happily pluck, a, pluck quote, a quote, but not <laughs> read the rest of the story. And so for and so part, part of this today, because um, um, I actually came away from Twitter for a little bit because everything, everything I, had I had to say was scathing and, and awful. And, awful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the reality was that I saw someone talk about Renisha as though this was a new thing. As though this was unusual. 
and, and yeah, we can yeah, get a bunch of names, names that made, that the, made news. the news. But, but I live in a city, city where the cops, the cops shot, a girl shot a girl who had her cell phone in her hand, hand a few years, years ago. ago. Yep, and it didn't and it make a flicker, flicker of, the of the news. I live in a, live city, in a city where, where you see, you see relatively, relatively consistently, consistently complaints, complaints from far south, south side residents about, about violence, violence done, done, about black about women, black women going missing, missing and the police, and the police doing, doing nothing. nothing. And you hear, and you the, hear complaint the complaint about, about the police, police doing, doing nothing. nothing. And, our and our budget for police brutality is one of the biggest, of the biggest in the nation, nation and, and we still are in the hole for what was budgeted. But what you don't see here is a change. Uh, a, girl a girl I've known since she was in eighth grade, grade had, a had a seizure. Her, her roommate, roommate called, called the paramedics. The paramedics. And when and the cops came with the paramedics or behind the paramedics because her roommate, roommate missed when they, when they first arrived, they decided, they decided that she was, that she was on drugs. drugs. And they arrested and her. They arrested her. And then they transferred her from the station for 12 hours. Until the last station, someone at the last station had good sense. To take, to, to take her to the hospital, where, where upon where, the, doctor where upon said, the doctor said, she's had multiple, she's had multiple seizures. seizures. What, what have you all been have doing? All what, doing? What, what, is this? what is this? But I live in a city, you can be held for 48 hours without medical attention. So, and that's, that's happening, happening to women, women of color. color. Um, it tends to be more focused on black women, but we don't make the news with that story. And, and people, people die, die from, from this, this, but it doesn't, it doesn't make, make the news, news unless, unless the family sues. And, and even then, it might not make it. Make it. I mean, to shift, definitely all that, but stop and frisk. That is huge in New York City, which is where I am right now. And I've noticed that, especially during the campaign, when we saw lots of feminism, getting very excited about Christine Quinn, very excited, who didn't really come out against Stop and Frisk until she started losing poll numbers for it. People didn't seem to comprehend why black women would care about Stop and Frisk, even though black women are stopped and frisked. Not a feminist issue. We're talking about a place with one of the higher violence rates in certain areas, very specific areas, which also have high police complaint rates. And how those rates off those reports buttress up against places where gentrification is heavy. Now, mind you, if we talk about places where everyone is supposed to be doing the work and how we have to get to New York, that's right here. This is where we are. But no work is happening around that. And when Christine Queen left the race, the conversation left entirely. There was no woman. There's no women's rights or women's issues in that race. But it's but we, black women are dying from stop and frisk. I live in the, one of the worst hit areas of Sandy. They're trying to close our hospital. If they close the hospital, they're trying to shut down. It's going to take us about thirty to forty minutes to get to the nearest hospital. Not a feminist issue. Well, here's I another. Take, I can take the train to now. I can take the train to now. Not a feminist issue. Well, but this is the thing, because, you know, here, I'm in Hyde Park, which is a nice neighborhood abutting neighborhoods that are not as gentrified. University of Chicago refuses to open a trauma center. They're the closest major hospital on the south side. So people who are shot, who are over the age of 18 here, who are injured, who are hurt in whatever way, have to be sent to county, to Northwestern, and for people who were not local... We're not, We're talking, not talking a 10-minute ride. ride. We're, talking We're talking 30, 40, 40 blocks. blocks. Mm -hmm. Right? right. Mm. And, and this, this is happening, happening around. around. We don't we have, have stop and stop frisk. And frisk. We, have we have con, con, con cards. cards. Same, same concept. concept. Same, same net, net effect. effect. But, but we know that stop, stop and frisk sticks out. And contact cards sound so nice. They have some contact. They took no, they, they had some contact. But, but it's not it's a feminist, not a feminist issue. issue. Well, well, because it's because not Nazi enough. enough. Right. Right. 
you know, you know we're, not we're not going to be. I heard more I heard today about, about Lululemon and, and his pants, pants and thigh and size. size. And okay, I get, I get it. it. Whatever, Whatever. sexist Sex commentary. commentary. Right, but, but this is but not the first time, time a, a, CEO a CEO has put his foot in his mouth when it comes to saying something, saying something wrong, wrong about, about women. women. Right, right. And, and for, for this, this to be an ongoing, ongoing problem, problem where you've got Stop and Chris, you've got Renisha, you've got Rakia Boy, you've got all these incidents. And then our conversation, our conversation turns, turns to yoga pants. Yoga pants. And I love and a I good love pair of yoga pants. pants. I live I in live yoga pants. pants. I'm in my own Navy. Navy. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right. But mine are from Old Navy, not Little Lemon. So maybe I'm missing something. But the conversation is more often going to be about things like that. Right, right. Than about then violence, violence against and black, black women. For this to be an ongoing. Well, but the other issue, and we already have established that I am the policy wonk slash how will we make a movement person. It goes hand in hand with the fact that when I have these conversations, and we continually have these conversations, every, between everybody here, we've been having some versions of these conversations, I think, since 1999. But the minute we start talking about, so what is our work towards changing policy? What is our work towards the general construction of the society we live in? People run for the hills. Because what we're talking about is that policy, how we set our hospitals, how we deal with our cops, how we deal with our food, how we deal with economics, all of this has deep, specific feminist implications. But we have to cry tears of blood to get feminists to talk about it. Well, you know, this was the thing we were talking about. Food. You know, snap. And I can name on one hand the number of folks who were talking about snap before it was the story. I can name on one hand the number of folks talking about what was happening in Chicago to schools, to Philly to schools, in Detroit to schools before it was the story. And all of these things are feminist issues. But it's not just, hey, big name feminism, talk about it. It's also the reality that we're apparently not talking about them the right way becomes the excuse. I'm sorry. I expect you to be able to use Google. I expect you to be able to filter out the fact that I'm pissed long enough to hear the magic words, Renisha, shooting, and use Google. But it's so hard. And I was telling I was telling Sadat earlier on Twitter, I think that the reason why white feminists are so um you like just so sort of like hell bent on asking women of color to educate them is because they, they want their black friends to somehow, you know, they feel like if they get the information from their black friend that somehow it personalizes it for them. Um and which is insulting in itself in it and which is insulting in in and of itself, but I really do think that that's how they think. But I want to bring these drugs on the mic and <laughs> Miss Kelly. But this is something that kind of talks about all the time. The 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 idea that I have to en engage in like five points brass knuckle brawling for you to see me as human. Yes, I'm angry. Somebody just got shot after a car accident. I am furious. The question starts to be, why aren't you? Yes. Why aren't you mad yet? In the face. In the face. And let me have a moment because I'm the, I think I'm the girl with the guns in this conversation. So let's have a, a conversation about what it takes to fire a 12 gauge. Let's talk about how this isn't an easy process to accidentally trigger. Right, basic gun safety. A, <laughs> you treat every weapon like it's loaded. B, unless you're about to shoot someone, the safety stays on. C, even if you have the safety off, unless you're literally about to shoot someone, you keep your finger off the trigger. The pull on a 12 gauge is not. Oops, my finger slipped. Like I know that if you're watching bad Law and Order episodes or something, you might think that. 
<laughs> but a 12 is no joke. A 12 will knock you off your feet. You are not going to the door with a 12 in your hand because you have decided that just maybe you got a problem. Well, unless you're an idiot. I mean, it's possible. You're a moron. In terms of home protection, not even my, not even my first choice. choice. Okay. okay. Way, too, way dangerous, too dangerous. Way too way much too recoil. Much recoil. Um, um, and, and it's a pain, it's a pain to, shoot. to shoot. It's a pain, pain to cock. cock. And, and, and it usually requires, requires, right, what TV, TV tells, tells you, you, it requires, it requires both, both hands. hands. You don't accidentally, you don't accidentally, accidentally blow accidentally someone's face off. For the record, For the record most, most people, people can't, can't hit the broad side of a barn with a 12 gauge. Right? They can fire one. But the recoil, the recoil is going to have that sucker flying, flying off in the face. face. But you accidentally, accidentally shot her in the face. face. Okay. okay. So wait, so because wait, I was under the impression, impression that, that so that now changing my story, she, she wasn't was shot, shot while walking away. away. Now she was shot in the face. Well, well it's it, 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 the it, side it, of her face was the last I heard. This story has changed so many times. I want an I autopsy, autopsy report. report. <sighs> because, because hey, hey, I still I don't understand why we came to the door locked and cocked and ready to rock. It's not what you do. Okay? okay. At minimum, At minimum even if you, you have, have it locked, locked and cocked, and cocked you're aiming at the ground. the ground. You're not you're aiming not, it. It's uh, not upright. Not you don't answer. You don't first answer, of all, how do you, like you even answer, answer the door? The door. Like this, like this, right? Right. You're gonna drop, You're gonna drop your, your weapon, weapon and, open, and the open the door. You're not gonna not stick gonna the weapon out the door. door. You're gonna leave with the weapon. weapon. That would be that stupid. Would be stupid. Because, because for all you, all know, you know, know, that knock that in the middle of the night right. is your neighbor, the police, whatever. whatever. Again, Again, this assumes you're not an idiot, and you know and you something, something about. about it. Weapons, weapons and things. And things. But all the, not to say that you are right because this is amazing, but number one, her mama said, and this is not Detroit. That's another thing that has pissed me off. This is not Detroit. Right. This is Dearborn, Michigan, where multiple people that I know from De Detroit have said this is like a sundown town. Mm -hmm. This is not, mm -hmm. oh, the violence of Detroit. This is the continual violence of systematic racism. Thank you very much. The police time frame for you to get there, they said, was two to three minutes. You ain't call the cops? Again, unless you're an idiot. You're not going to the door. Like, okay. I don't know if anybody else in this conversation has ever fired a weapon. I fired everything from an M16 to a rocket launcher to a sidearm. Thank you, Uncle Sam. <laughs> I've also, I've also fired, fired a pig. pig. This is a 50, 50 cal. cal. That's the That's one with the, with the belt. belt. Okay. So one so of the one things you learn, learn, maybe this is just, just courtesy, courtesy of actually, of actually seeing with bullets through the flesh, flesh, is that, is that unless, unless you're trying, you're to, trying kill to kill someone, someone you don't, you do, don't this. do this. If there if was a gun safety course as part of the licensing, licensing you learn not to do this. Hell, if his daddy taught him, you learn not to do this. So when so we're, we're having, having this, conversation this conversation about the calling the cops, not calling the cops, I understand someone's going to say, well, you don't know what he was thinking. And I'm going to answer that having grown up around a weapon, having had some guy drunk, bamming on the back door, trying to kick it in when I was a kid, my grandfather, who was the kind of guy who really was going to shoot you, got up and went to the door, armed. And still, and still didn't, didn't stick it out the out door, door first. first. I, don't I don't care what he what was he thinking. Was. Because, because this is this fear of a black, black person. person. And it was and a it death was a warrant death for this little girl. girl. And I know I someone's going to tell me when she was 19. She's, she's a little girl. Because we deal, with, girl. we deal with women. We have had our experiences with feminism. Where we have come up and said blah, 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 blah. And they're like, well, they're learning. They're so young. You're young until you're 35. But the minute she hits 19, she's not a little girl. That's a baby. That's that look. Is, that is a no. college sophomore. Maybe. Maybe. She might be a college freshman. Right? 19? My oldest son is 14, so all I can see is the babies I see running around his high school when I look at this girl's pictures. 
And Lord, I was an idiot. But what gives me is that we're still somehow. somehow Go ahead, Jamie. Jamie. You know, we're still somehow blaming her for being out that night. This makes my stomach turn. Mostly because it reminds me of one time I was in Atlanta. And I was like almost nine months pregnant at a white friend's house. There were people over. Everybody was in the back. And you know, my friend is like, such and such is coming, you can get the door. So I go to open the door, and the friend is a white guy. And he looks at me like I'm like crazy. crazy, and he pushes me off to the side and starts looking around because he thought I was a robber or something. Mind you, I opened the door and said, hi, I'm Vera, Ed's friend. But he still thought that I was a robber. And like this honestly makes my stomach turn because it's the automatic assumption that you're criminal and being a woman and being nine months pregnant did not change that because I'm black. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. If I armed, he could have tried to find a reason to fucking shoot me because he thought I was a burglar trying to find time for somebody or something. You know? Because burglars answer the door. I extended my hand to say hello, and like this is what I. So I mean, obviously, this is not anything like new that doesn't happen all the time. Black women is a. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I have went white women grip their fucking purse in front of me when they say. I had a white woman. Like I'm gonna jump timers. Mm-hmm. 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 I had a white woman in the grocery store um, decide, decide that the iPod, iPod it wasn't even an iPod, iPod, this was back when Dell was still making MP3 players, players. That, somehow that somehow I had, I had stolen, stolen hers, hers out of her, out of her purse. purse. She yeah, happened to see it in my hands. I'm walking, walk, pushing my little grocery cart shopping. shopping. So she got she store got security. security. Now, I'm in Jewel. On 35th, On 35th King, Drive, King Drive, which Jamie, as Jamie can attest, is already not the most mixed race neighborhood. It's actually, frankly, largely black, except for super students. And she's freaking out, and the security guard is trying to ask me questions. And the security guard is looking real confused because I look like everybody's mama. Um, I got a cart full of baby food and diapers and stuff. And he makes her. Turn out her out purse. purse. And it's in the bottom. bottom. Did, she Did she apologize? apologize? Of course not. No. no. She got real flustered and scurried away. But I'm five foot six. Around then, I was probably 125, 135 pounds. I look about as threatening as a bag of kittens, to be honest. Like, it doesn't hit like one though. It's no. like a mattress. <laughs> no, I have But see, that's the that's, that's the problem though, because it's not about how we perceive each other; it's how they perceive us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, you know we, we as much as we talk about this, and we all have these experiences. I don't. I, don't, I, I, I think I it's think like, like we don't we have don't control, control over how, how they, they perceive, perceive us, us, and that's and why. The fact the that fact it's not a feminist, not a feminist issue and not being talked, talked about, about is even worse, worse because, because, because people who are claiming to be allies and speaking for women, women um, are bringing um, this as a as common experience, experience to the, like, to the like attention, attention, to the forefront of people, people, people when this is a common experience, experience of black, black women, not being shot to death for this, but being constantly labeled as criminal even when you're in a dire situation needing help. I mean, I don't get help. Like I, I people laugh at me when I say this, but you're five six. I'm about six. I'm about five foot ten. I'm mm-hmm. adding in the hair. I kind of hit that even six foot feet, and I'm two hundred plus pounds and broad shouldered, solid girl. I also hit like it, but I have already had it established that I'm not getting help. I've been stalked. I've been followed around. 
And I have literally been flustered and sitting there going, I, I need help. And I've had people who were supposedly down for the cause. And I'm like, this person makes me feel uncomfortable. Can I get some help? And they're like, no, you got it. Oh, so wait, let's talk about this strong thing, right? Because in 2011, when I was being stalked and harassed, and there were people who were upset about how not strong I was. Now, I was in a crappy apartment with bugs, and I have PTSD around insects. Well, it's a PTSD. I didn't know that at the time. So I was over the top, not okay. And an amazing, amazing number of people who really love me and really think of me as human totally stepped up. But there were people criticizing how I responded because I wasn't strong enough. And... I guess strong black women, I'm tough. I'm not allowed to have a need to want. I'm not allowed to not be okay. You know, when we talk about this. It's funny you mention this. Hmm? No, I'm saying it's funny you mention that because, I, because it sort of just sort of happened with Professor Crunk a couple of weeks ago. Well, and that's where I was going to go. You know, when we're talking about this, we, when we talk about Renisha, and what, and took, what her took her two hours? hours. I'm, betting I'm betting it took her, it took two, her hours two hours to decide, decide she, couldn't she couldn't do it by herself. By to, to go, go seek help. help. Right? Because right. how because often, often do you default, default to, to, I'm not going to get the help. help. So let, so me, let just me just handle, handle this handle myself. myself. And also she knows where she is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every I have friends in Detroit. I have friends in New York who aren't online, who aren't big on social media, and when I said, oh, this happened in Dearborn, they were like, oh. She knows that she has to be afraid to get help. She also was in a major car crash, who knows that she was conscious that entire time. Mm -hmm. And there's this, that myth of the, because I remember, me and you have talked about this, mm -hmm. Mickey, around 2011, when we were frothing at the mouth, and you had that article come out. Come, article come out where everybody likes to talk about certain things in theory, about how it's dangerous for women to be in public, how it's dangerous for women to have health issues, how it's dangerous for all of these things to happen. But when you are faced with a diet-in-the-flesh woman, someone who doesn't necessarily want to be a victim or an archetype, or an archetype, but someone who wants to be a human and expresses human needs, if she's not white, kind of average-looking, certain size, Everybody throws their hands up and goes, I don't know how to handle this problem. And the problem is you're not meeting their expectations. The problem isn't that you're in danger. The pro this takes into, this into the question, I have this saying, the ratio is not equality, right? That when we say, oh, we're colorblind or whatever, and then we, we are all Trayvon, we're all Renisha. No, we're not. No, right? no we're not. Um, we think that this is equality, that not talking about how things are different is okay. But the reality is that while we, people in this chat, could be in Renisha's shoes or Rakia Boyd's shoes or Katherine Johnson's shoes or whatever, um, I got lucky. I was in Ayana's shoes. I just didn't get shot. Um, I got shot at. When I was yeah, not much older than she was. was. Um, um, but what but we don't what talk, talk about, about is that, that this happens uh, in, a in a way where, where folks, folks can't. can't... Oh, hold, oh, on, hold one on one second. second. Somebody's trying to. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I'm trying to, trying to deal with Google. Deal with Google. But what we're talking about is that this doesn't happen to everyone. Right? I will sit down and have a conversation with a Muslim or Jewish feminist about danger in a way that I'm not going to have with a middle class white American. It's just not going to happen. And we can talk around the diaspora and violence against black women. We can have, a lot, we can have an in-depth conversation with various Asian women and all of these things, Southeast Asian, all of these things. But this is one of those places where the commonality doesn't occur. 
there are no white women walking around in America who have to worry about being shot just for being white. I know white supremacists like to tell that lie about the imaginary, invisible, rampaging black people who are going to shoot you for being white. But the reality is that had she been white and knocked on that door in the hood, in the hoodest of hoods, she still, still probably would be okay. Because let's look, let's look at Cleveland. Right? right? Those girls hung out the door screaming for help. And someone came. And a black man came, kicking in the door, helping the girls. Let's call. Let's get you some help. I was actually And then said, in the aftermath, I would have, if had I known what was going on, we would have been having a different conversation. They'd have been out. Have I'd have been on trial. That's what he said. I had this conversation with Brown Femi Power earlier today, where we where we talk. We like to pathologize the idea of black violence, but I am, I'm almost assured that if she had, if if Renisha had knocked on a door in the hoodest of hoods, she probably would have been alive today as well. She still would be alive. She would still be alive because let's not be again, like you said, we love to pathologize black folks and violence. But I will take my old neighborhood over, say, Lincoln Park or Lakeview any day because I was safer there. I knew the people there, and I knew that if I was in danger, they would they would have my back. The corner boys in your average hood would have given her a tough cell phone yes. to call somebody. They would have given her a cell phone. Pretty much. Yeah. This is what I was going to say. I mean, I lived in the Bronx, and, like, when there was going to be, like, shit going down on the block, like, the boys from the corner would be like, you don't want to be around here around 6. After that, you know, you should take the other street. Like, the adults always look out for your fucking safety. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Show me yeah, what I think a lot of it, too, is tied to, like, this this idea that we want to make it seem like black black people are are, have easier easier access to weapons weapons and guns. And, like, like, one of my big big projects, projects, like, like, just just in my undergrad undergrad was looking at the ways ways the legislation legislation in the state state has has, uh, uh, taken away our right to bear arms in numerous ways. And so even if we're talking about people in various hoods, the idea that all of these black people living in the hood just have guns waiting behind the door is so tied to this very white supremacist idea of like the crazy violent black person and you know also i think just tying to what you guys were saying in the beginning you know with with the the way that this is all tied into the industrial complex and even, Even when we're not when being we're not colorblind, colorblind, it's not a feminist, not a feminist issue, issue. And, and when it's when a it's race, race issue, issue, it's a black, black man, man issue, issue. and how mm-hmm. all, of all of these things, things still work to kind of take away our agency and our, and our power, power, and how and even if we were, were in the opposite, the opposite shoes, we still we don't have the ability, ability to often protect, protect ourselves in those same ways that these white supremacists or whoever this man cl- who, who shot Renisha claims to be just some, some white man who is armed and is afraid of a black man. I don't know, but, you know, like, it just, it's all connected in all of these messed up ways, and, and it's all tied to keeping us unable to defend ourselves at the end of the day. Mickey, can you re-invite um, Anasa? She's in. She's I'm here. Oh, hi! <laughs> <laughs> Like I just realized that like Strug, you're like talking about some real serious shit, and I'm just sitting here like the biggest smile on my face. I'm just like, oh my god, they so smart. <laughs> like I'm just really happy to be here right now. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. I suppose we should like do real introductions because it occurs to me that we didn't. <laughs> okay. We just kind of hopped. We were sidetracked by Google. <laughs> we were just so like for those who don't know. We have stuff to get off the chase. <laughs> So who's well, going first? Well, do I go? Um, yes, you go. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. Um, hi, my name is Inasa. I also go by So True um, on Tumblr and Twitter. And what what else should I say? Hmm? What else should I say? Is that was good. Else? Okay. okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. Hi, I guess. Uh, Jamie, as you hide behind Dexter. 
There's not yes, actually a white I'm man Dexter in this Morgan. chat. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm the black Dexter Morgan. Um, <laughs> also known as the way of the id on Twitter and everywhere else, I am the co-editor of Hood Feminism. I can't raise I can't the roof well. well. It's an eternal, eternal shame. shame. <laughs> oh, guys. It's just this. Yeah, but I look dorky. <laughs> you know, when you're little, like you have little wrists. You see the size oh, of my wrists? Half a week. Who's going next? Yeah. You, Danielle. Oh, man. All right. I'm D Strug, aka Struggling to Be Heard on Tumblr or at D Strug <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> and yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Language. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sadet, let's get it let's get it going. I am Sadet Harry, aka the Black Amazon on Ooh, everywhere. Everything? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Twitter, mm -hmm. Tumblr, Blogspot. Zahira. Yeah. Oh, all right. I'm Zahira <laughs> Kelly, and yeah, I'm uh, better known as uh, Bad Dominicana on Tumblr and Twitter. Um, I do a lot of rabble rousing with these lovely ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Zahira's being shy. We're going to work on that with her. <laughs> Humble. Oh. Um, but la but um, ladies, I, I did want to touch on what happened last week with uh, feministings. Um, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. We're going to have to have this. No. Like, we're not, I think we, while we're here, while we are all here, no. we're going to have to talk about the fucking epic fail. The epic fail that was feminist things. Uh, Latina Dad, um, colorism conversation. So, who would like to start? Bad Dominicana, you're up. Mm -hmm, you're up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a hero. So, let's just begin with the fact that they called it coloring Latina Dad and build it as talking about colorism, the complexities of colorism in Latin America, right? Mm hmm. Turns out the moderators are white Latina, the other two are white Latinos who wrote practically the same essay, and there was one Afro-Latina who she tried, but I mean, <laughs> she also wrote a letter to Jaquia, um, the girl who was denied, you know, the pageant crown for mm -hmm. being black, um, where she told her not to be like those loud, angry, black girls. So this is the slogan that they chose. And it's like, you know, basically the whole conversation was white Latinas talking about, I feel more white than Latina. I don't understand that being treated Hispanic here, but I'm white in my country. You know? You know? And it's like, are you going to have to help you just come the fuck again? How the fuck do you call this a colorism conversation, color Latina, and it's centered around the same white women that are absolutely everywhere in Latin America and everything. You know what I'm saying? And they pick the one girl who they really not going to check, check them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Because that's what they do. Kind of like today's Susie X who came out talking shit about... Um, Call him out, call him out. One fire, come out. <laughs> call him out, call him out. Call hey, him out. hey, hey, Mark hey. Mark for Valensky because, you know, they like to have their tokens that are safe that will, like, you know, come up to back for them, you know? Uh -huh. And it's like, you know, you have to have some fucking <laughs> recent or everything around whiteness all over again. And it's hard to have all their white or white. Like, you even have a fucking clue what the fuck you're talking about. Or I know exactly what the fuck they were doing. They just didn't give it. They just didn't care. You know? Well, and my thing was because everyone said, "Oh, you're doing the most over a hashtag." When I got upset, and like the and now, now event had happened, happened, and I was really letting it ride. Um, and I get that feministing didn't put that on. Now put that on, and then feministing wrote about it and whatever this whole interplay. Um. And I kind of eye rolled about, about it because I had a I moment, had a moment when, when I saw the panel and someone, someone sent me the sent pictures, pictures and I said, huh, interesting. interesting. 
because this is the lightest panel. And I'm not saying you're not black because you're light, but I'm saying that when you're panel, and we're talking about women of color, and this entire panel can pass a paper bag test, girl, some something this milk may not be quite as clean as a paper bag. Can I? Can I? Can I speak? That's the first. Yo, you, you go okay. first, cause you okay. know I'm gonna go in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then, because then the white woman of color thing happens. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you what, what really set me off. I come back. I see everyone's upset. Jamie is calling me to give me a heads up because, for the record, until Tuesday, I spent all day, every day, Monday through Friday, at a full time government job. I'm not actually hanging out on Twitter High five. near as much. Exactly. Um. So she's trying to give me the heads up, and I get home and I look at my mentions and I look at my DMs and people are not happy. And whether this is intentional or not, people had begun to think they see the hashtag X kind of conversation is about to happen. It's going to be about intersectionality. It's going to be about race. It's going to be all of these things, and it's going to be handled in a way that is relevant to the people who are most marginalized. Yeah, yeah. That was not what happened with that panel. That that was not not what happened. And not at all. I'm looking at anger, and I'm confused because why would you think I had anything to do with that? And then I go and I look and I realize, oh. So we've all we've been all led been down, down the mulberry, mulberry bush, bush. Around, down the path around the mulberry bush. Okay, let me call, okay, this, let me call out. this out. <laughs> people got upset. How can you say it's about white people and whatever? And I, first of all, I didn't call your name. You're a hit dog oh, holler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Second of all, I understand this is your friend, your money, your whatever. That's great. That does not absolve them of fucking up. No. Colorism no, is doesn't. a real and pertinent issue in communities of color. Mm. Of color. Mm. Let me say that one more again. Say it one more time. Color. Please. Okay. <laughs> I, lack thereof. Like, right. And I understand that we are talking about colorism in, in, in Latino communities. Unfortunately, we are not having that conversation from the perspective that I want to be associated with. I'm, I'm, I'm from, from the, bottom the bottom to the top, to the top girl. girl. Not a trickle-down trickle girl. Down, girl. No, no. So this is this problem problem. One. Problem, problem two. two. I'm about, I'm to, about have to have a respectability. respectability. I understand. I'm crass. I'm aggressive. Um, I really will yell some straight up. Move. Get out of my way. Right. I am, I am everything, everything that the South Side gives you. Not quite not bullshit. bullshit. I like I my brush. Like brush. I like my brush. Work. work it out. So I get that this is not being commodified in the way people want it to be and whatever. But hey, here's, here's a crazy, crazy concept, concept for, you. for you. I don't want to be the Ann Coulter of feminism. I don't want to be sitting here as this thing is slapped on everything but a bag of chili so that someone can say they participate. Make something up of your own, do something, or at the very least, at the barest damn minimum, be able to interact with the folks most likely to be facing harm for being marginalized in a particular way. Okay? So... We're going to talk about colorism colorism. in Latino Latino communities. communities. Maybe Maybe you should talk to Latinos Latinos who can't can't pass the paper paper back back to us. And more than just one. (laughs) 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 Right, right. I'm just raising my hand. Can I? Okay. Can I? And you need I, to go first, because I'm gonna go off for five to ten minutes. Okay. Y'all, because, y'all know I am. <laughs> but maybe, okay, maybe you should actually go first, because I'm coming at this from like a black American woman from the south with, like, with at a time when I feel like at a specific time in Atlanta's history when immigration was what it was, and there are people, there are people there from there. other places 
but there was black and there was white. And if you looked white, and if you had the ability to act like a white person towards black people, that kind of puts you in the white category. And you can be German, and you can be Argentinian, and you can be whatever it is that you were, but you were white. And I feel like I'm seeing this, I've seen this happen in like a couple of spaces, especially on Tumblr, because that's like where I've been hanging out for the past couple of years. But in other spaces where white is getting defined as this like, I feel like if we listen to white passing people of colors or white women of color, by the time we like get done with their definition of white, we're going to be left with like the most purest Scandinavian, Nordic, blue eyes, blonde hair, you came from the ice mountain. Helga von Hessenberg. Like anything else other than that isn't white. And I feel like I'm seeing No, so, but you're right, because to them if if you literally cannot play Led Zeppelin's immigrant song when the person hits the stage, they're not white. Yes. If I can't hear, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, head, no. But I just, and, and so it's this really weird thing, I feel like, where, where it's kind of like, okay, you, like, white people, pure D white, might have issues with you, like, oh, what, you're Italian? Oh, 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 what you're you're ethnically this? Oh, what you're you're Brazilian? Oh, well that you know. And so they might give you a little bit of side eye, but at the end of the day, if you and I are walking down the same street, one of us is more likely to get shot than the other one for being there. not doing anything else but but being there and being alive and walking down the street. Are going to get shot or arrested or lasered or accused of stealing something or whatever? What global warming? Whatever. Like, <laughs> well, you're going I mean. to get accused of doing that, and the person who, granted, they might not let you in the country club, but they're not about to let you. And they're not throwing your children in jail just because. Well, so I, mean, I don't know. I feel like or Zimmerman. Like, if you, like, I don't know, this is like, okay, like, if you're a white passing person of color, like, I get the struggle, and, I mean, I get the, and, and fucking thing, I'm sorry, it's, I'm sorry, language, but, but language, I'm gonna watch it. Um, here's my thing. Light people of color, you guys are not the only one to feel alienated on the basis of not being black or brown or whatever enough. Oh, shit. Well, hold on. Do you no. see my hair? Do you see this 4C? Do you see this right here? Do you see this kinky stuff right here? Do you know how many times I was called Oreo growing up? Do you see my skin color? You can't ex mistake me for anything other than purity black, and that's what I dealt with that, too. Please give me a drink. Can, can I have a, so, wait, wait, before you, you start to that, I just have to point this out. If we're going to have this conversation, we have to talk about the fact that if we're in an American context, America is specifically structured around the concept of everything but black. We don't have all of this language around anything else. But you got a but touch of the tar brush, brush, you got racial you got gradations from mulatto to quadroon to octoroon, the plockage system. system. Mm, like, like mm, let's mm, really get mm, here for mm, a second mm, about, what mm, about what it means to be Creole versus Cajun. Okay? okay? We are a country, we are a country founded, founded, run, based in the concept that the, that the closer you are to black, black, the less the human you are. And no, for the record, as you can see this face, Mixing, mixing. Interracial, interracial relationships, relationships any, of any of that? No. Didn't change shit. No. Nothing. Pure no. 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 damn thing. Mm -mm. The thing is, Latin America is structured pretty much the same way. This is the thing, like, Latin American people in the U.S., they lock into the whiteness megatron of the U.S. perfectly because what they're anti-indigenous and they're anti-black. The closer to white, the better. And the closer to black, and the fucking worse you are. So it's like they, and it's exactly what the thing is. You, you need only look at the sports to understand that. You know what I'm saying? Like, they tried to act like that was an exception. 
<laughs> now, like, you can't be Latino because you're anti black, but it's like, yeah, no. Are you going to kick out all Latinos out of Latinos out then? There's only about seven Latinos left then. If all the anti black ones are going to go, then I guess there's no black. I mean, and the hero brings up a good point. <laughs> And this is where I'm going to have a moment. I talked with y'all about this. I'm going to have this moment. <laughs> y'all go get it. Have it. Look, let's, let's do it. Bring it on. Bring it on. We're ready. Number one, I'm West Indian. I am Guyanese. I'm Guyanese, Bayesian, and a little bit of Brazilian. But let's let's start to talk about that and this idea of people post pictures of, oh, when you finally race mix, this is everyone will look like this kind of amorphous, amorphous non-racialized person. I need those persons to go back to do, doing Mendele Mendelian genetics and talk about dominant and recessive traits before they open their mouths again. But let's also... Let's look, also at the, look at all the Latin America. Yeah. Look at the Dominican Republic. Look oh. at us. I mean, what do you get? Yeah. My grand, my so grandmother, my grandmother was haired down her back, wrapped herself in sorry Indian. I am six foot five of the deepest of Mother Africa. Okay, <laughs> but let's go back to the hashtag. Since if you decided you're gonna make me talk about feminist things, yep, let's I go. sure am. So how did that hashtag start, Mickey? Okay. So we really want to go what, here. See, what, what had happened first, was... What was the first post in that hashtag? And just say that, and then I'll go. <sighs> Hold on. <laughs> I feel like the audience needs to be grounded and understand, because I sound real up, uptown. I grew up in Hyde Park before Hyde Park was pretty and green, and UC had bought half of it. We were green. Yeah, same here. But not the same kind of green. <laughs> so I come from a background where... Run up, get done up is more than a notion. And if you're messing with one of my friends, you're messing with me. So the hashtag starts because I'm defending Black Amazon. Let me say again, the hashtag starts because I'm defending Black Amazon. Now, people were shocked and appalled and amazed at how willing I was to call a name, how willing I was to offend someone, how willing I was to say, hey, this thing happened. But I was asked for receipts and I was able to give them. Let's be clear. Mm. I was able to point to links because your boy Hugo, he mm. kept the evidence. Mm. So if you are going to get dirty, if you're going to get in the mud and the muck and roll with somebody who does that kind of dirt, understand sociopaths are proud of what they do. And I know, I know someone's going to say, well, we don't know that he's this and we don't know he's that and that's just a word and you shouldn't use that word. And you're right. Damn lie anyway. However, we stood up and announced to the world that we had done this thing. We did it over and over again. We kept records. We were proud of it. We knew what we were doing. You coming to me later and saying, well, we had no idea or I was protecting my community or we didn't intend to cause harm or whatever. Okay, look. Remember we talked about Google at the beginning of this chat. Google works. I promise you. Bing, Bing, I came out. Came out. <laughs> <laughs> but Google, you get on that that Google. Let me sound like somebody's grandma. You get on that that Google and you type in the words and you push the button, and Google will give you facts. Right? It might be middling with some stuff, but Google will give you facts. On top of that, the Wayback Machine. Hi, dear Internet. The Wayback Machine exists. It's real. Those robot spiders crawling your text. I'll go into the Wayback Machine. If I can go find old fanfic from deceased fandoms because I have a hankering to reread something, you, 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 you can go find the facts on this. You can go find the write-ups. You can do that basic bit of work. Promise. You won't Can I tag in Mimo? You won't die. Can I tag in Mimo? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I've been mm -hmm. online since I was 22 years old. So that turns 30 in about six months. I started blogging in 2006. I was there for all of those conversations. If you Google Black Amazon, I'm in everybody's comment section and most of these people's links. The issue was, and I hate saying his name, but I'm going to do it anyway. The issue with Hugo was that he ran a good barrier between, and let's go back to what we started with, the scary, angry, evil women of color, especially that big black Amazon and that angry Chicana, 
who kept asking us questions we didn't like, who kept pointing out that when you're talking about feminism, you shouldn't show up with one person of color who constantly ref references the black experience without being black. Let's also talk about the fact that I've done workshops. I do workshops. I do the AMC. I did WAM. I went to a specific college. I've been in rooms with these people. I've been in rooms where they've hidden behind Hugo to stay away from me. So when everybody pretended that they didn't understand what was going on, that's more than just, oh, racism. That's a damn lie because I have interactions. I can go into my email and pull out emails. What happened there was that in 2013, five years after things like Burkergate, the seal press problem, the problem with full frontal feminism, then the problem with Amanda Marcotte's book and the spear checkers, which I took personally because, hey, Caribbean, my people die that way, is that it is very comfortable to pretend you don't know things. It's just not true. The idea of what happened with Solidarity is for white women is that when you came to defend me and we had receipts, they didn't have a response because the only actual policy was to shut these women up. And I would love to say that I'm special. I'm special for many reasons. But the thing that binds together the women they try to shut up is they tend to not meet respectability. They tend to not be in certain circles or they tend not to present as in cir certain circles. Because how many times when we got back to starting criti critiquing Fem Future, they went, you're all haters, you're all this, you're all that, until at least three of the people who had problems had PhDs and then they wanted to have talks after they checked your credentials. But what that, happened? That, that just. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. So what happened here is that when we look at the actual feminist history, and this is about women's studies because mama has a degree in American history. So we're talking about the history of how we interact as women. No one steps up to the plate. And you know what? I'm tired of the idea of women who go, well, I'm there and they're not mean to me. Well, you're there and you're a lawyer and you're a this and you're a that. You meet their respectability <laughs> threshold. We don't. And when and as long as no one was looking, they were completely okay with what happened. Because we talk about crying and people mm. not understanding. When people were sending me and BFP and you death threats, nothing. When people were telling every, us everything but a child of God, you're a dog, you are the problem with feminism. I have pieces from major articles calling me the problem with feminism. I know people who compared me to a rapist and I'm a sexual assault survivor because this is how we defend our turf. And then solidarity is for white women happens and what the issue is it's not okay. But nobody wants to talk about the fact that you aren't talking about a nebulous group of people. You're talking directly to the person that was part of this. We're talking directly to the person who still hasn't acknowledged that he targeted people. He admitted he targeted people. They still haven't said sorry. We're talking about the fact that he defended this whole group, of which the new feminist editors would know the history of because it's in the books, that they still haven't talked about. So can we talk about the idea that the abuse of certain women of color leads to games and platforms for other women of color that we're not discussing? Mm -hmm. Because how many times did Mamita Mala my girl called them everything but a child of God at various conferences before they suddenly were very excited to get a Latina to write for them and bringing that person up to editorial status. I don't know their inner workings, but we need to have this conversation, especially when we're having a conversation and people are tooting the gains of women and what women are doing, but when it comes down to the policy work we want to talk about, when we talk oh, about the showing up and the showing off, <clears throat> who showed up? Who hit 91% in Virginia? Who hit 91% hmm. of Virginia? Who? It wasn't all Who? the women you ran up on a bus to do. Me, mama, ours, we showed up. But when it's time to show up for us, when we have people blowing our faces off for existing, you can't get on Google? You don't know how to use your iPhone or Android or Nexus or Samsung? No? You don't know how to do that? Wait, wait. But I'm not to supposed to be angry. First. But I'm not supposed to be department. angry, right? 
Right, they have to talk about yoga pants. But see, this is the thing, and this is what I was going to say. Because, so, I got the education. But I got the education by way of Uncle Sam, right? I make no bones that I survived childhood sexual abuse. I survived being sexually assaulted later. I make no bones that I was in an abusive first marriage. I have kids. My kids have two different fathers. I was married to both of them. You'll be all right. And even if I wasn't, you'd still be all right. But I come out and I say this happened and then I'm too aggressive. Mm -hmm. I'm scary. Now I'm going I'm to I'm gas my own ego for a second. This face? This face is as threatening as kittens. Like, really. Come on. Old ladies stopped me on the street to tell me whatever the hell has run through their brains that day. I have random folks, random old black women walk up to me and just start telling me all kinds of things, call me baby and order me around. And I go with it because they're old and that's what you do. <laughs> it is, right? But I cuss, we cuss, we're hood. And what's happened is that they were able to talk about the poor, those people, as long as those people, you people, weren't able to speak for themselves. Then Twitter happened, Tumblr happened, Live Journal happened, all of these things. And I know I'm going backwards in time, but you get what I'm saying. And, oh, wait, we can just talk to those people. We don't need you to translate. I can talk about being on food stamps, on what it takes to go to the office the, the umpteen billion times with the papers and the dehumanizing experience and whatever, and it's not academic. And that's where this all breaks down because all of a sudden we want to have real conversations with real people about real issues in real spaces. This is not academic theory anymore. This is life. And I don't think for a lot of them, they are ready to be in the room with the folks they've been taught have no right to be at that table. They're not. Well, and I guess, again, we're not people. We're not people. We're causes to be advanced. We're talking points. We're something. We're, we're, we're discussion. We're not, we're not human. We're not going to recognize our humanity. That's not part of the game. And we, they, don't, they don't get money or profits or, or page clicks that way. And but the thing about it is, and this is specifically where we talk about our that the diversity of us, because I've come at it from a slightly different angle, in which yes, I am an immigrant child, I come from Far Rock, but I was part of an amazing program that educated certain people. So by high school, I was in the best schools, multilingual, etc. And there is a rhetorical block that comes with these when you start to discuss this idea that just because we have these things doesn't make me better and it doesn't make me something that I need to imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I reek mufufun, but I'm still hood. This is still where I'm from. My family is still in the yard, they're still back home. And this is not something that I have to abandon. How does the movement work? If I have to meet conditions to be considered part of it, that's not a mm -hmm. movement. That's a party. <laughs> that's a club. That's a country well, club. I mean, this is. is not Miss America, right? I'm not in the pageant. Okay? My people are ever so country. I have on my, my Twitter bio proud descendant of hex throwing goons because my people were Arkansas. Louisiana, Florida, Oklahoma, mm, mm. country. Half the things that when I talk about cooking, and y'all are like, ooh, that sounds good, if you know what the hell I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I make oxtails too. I grew up on oxtail and neck bones and pot liquor, and I'm not going to pretend that. What's the thing about that? Y'all, what's huh? the thing? We eat it from the rooter to the tutor? Rooter to the tutor. <laughs> Look, baby has chitlins every year. Every year. My mother-in-law makes a great pot of chitlins, and I have some every year. I know how to make your sweet potato pie. And then, because my people married anything that couldn't get the hell away, I know how to make patties, too. You'll be all right. <laughs> right? Gumbo. And look, my family, my family parties, you'll see gumbo. You'll see patties. And you'll see some old-fashioned hogshead cheese mm. 
on the same damn table. Okay. But me, as a, me as a hero, we're talking about this. It's where we're the, with this entire of expression, and I, 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 we said it aloud. Like y'all gotta let me get mad in public so I don't grab the machete and start running down the street. Yeah. I am proud to. I am proud to be where I'm from. I am Guyanese. I am West Indian. I am American. I'm an immigrant. But those are things that are part of me, and they help make me who I am. I eat goat. I believe in sauce. If you get me too angry, we might throw some hands. I might call you everything but a child of God. And when I get angry, my accent will come out. That doesn't make me less of a woman. That doesn't make me need less help. That doesn't make me less able to participate in a movement to construct a world that I can be powerful in. But what happens a lot when I'm talking to feminists, and I've started using the star quotes that Brown Femi Power put forward, is we spend about as much time figuring out why we don't have to help each other as we do helping each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, oh, you're not this, or you're not that, you're not the right color, you don't have the right credentials, you have the right you credentials, the right but pedigree. you're not using the pedigree. Or the new one where everybody says, well, what is your brand? What is your brand? Oh, my God. Stop, 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 let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. You and me in this brand, this word brand, we have to fight. But, and this is the thing I'm coming from that I like to say is, I'm sorry, I'm very aware I'm the descendant of slaves, I'm the descendant of Indian peonage workers, I'm the descendants of natives, and I'm the de- descendants of Chinese farmers. My people from all sides and colors have been on sale since the dawn of time. I would like to exist in a space where every moment we're not trying to figure out how to make money off of my body. Yeah. Give me a minute. Not mm-hmm. everything is meant to be commodified. No. I feel like, but, but with Twitter, especially, especially, you know, I've seen it just today where Al Jazeera, you know, hosted or is hosting um, a, a conversation. For, it's hosting, you know, the Black Power is for Black Men conversation without Jamila Lemieux. You know? Are you serious? Um, no, no, that's happening. See his face? Yes. You see his face? That, that's actually happening. So I'm going to start just, fighting there. <laughs> <laughs> so this week is Jamila. Last week it's Mickey. Um, the week before was me. I mean, like, we keep doing this shit, right? We keep, you know, you know, everything, it's fair game, and it shouldn't be fucking fair game. And I'm going to be cursing a lot in the next few minutes, so you're just going to have to bear with me. Not everything is meant to be commodified, but if you're going mm. to do it, make sure, mm. make sure, mm. make sure mm. you attribute, you, you, you attribute co- properly. Fada! I have something I want to say. We are done. Go ahead. Sorry. Go. Go, ahead. Go ahead. I really like what is it with this lack of class analysis? What is it with this lack of like analysis of capitalism? And like, no, really, we don't have to be a commodity to be valuable. Mm. I understand and, and not even like and not even like coming from a place of survival. Because honestly, like I feel like it's one thing for like Chief Keith to like do his shit and get paid for it. Like Make your money, boo. Why shouldn't you? Like, mm-hmm. what you've gone through, where you're from, like, the conditions that created you, why shouldn't you make as much money as possible doing that? Not even coming from a place of that, but coming from a place of, like, like you're like you're telling people to, like, rent out your childhood home because your parents turned into a bed and breakfast. Like, you have options. Like, you can read things if you wanted to. You can think about things if you wanted to. You have the time, you have the space, you have the money. But at the end of the day, you're sounding exactly like Rupert Murdoch. Oh, wait, maybe that's because you write for him. Anyway, um, my point being that, I don't know, just like this, and, and just this kind of, like, trickle down to, like, black people thing where it's like, well... I mean, if you didn't want to get abused, then, like, maybe you should have copyrighted yourself. Yeah. Like, if you didn't want your stuff stolen, then maybe you should have thought about that and then made an appropriate business plan, even though you right, were but- posting left, right, up, and down when the same thing happened to you, not even exactly. a few months ago. But, <laughs> um, well, that can- being said, I just, I, I just... I'm just like, what, like... Like, okay, and then these same people have, like, their Twitter bios, like, oh, I'm so out of the box, like, Dude. Miss Ratchet, like, Dude. Dr. Ratchet, and this, this, that, and the other. <laughs> it's just like, okay, well, like, you know what, like, Ratchet does? Ratchet, like, takes, like, a dollar store weave and turns it into shit that, like, 
gets put on the runway six months mm -hmm. later. You hey, know what I mean? Like right, you're not right. <laughs> you're you're not doing anything but being a vulture right now, and you can't even come Testify. up with any actual original anal like at the very least come up with original analysis. If you can't like stuff envelopes, if you can't lead a march, if you can't do any actual work, at least at least say something original and yeah. not like Oh, oh let's like reaffirm capitalist oh, blah day blah and, then, and, and then, expect right. that to be the revolution. I don't but know. See, I, really feel like, I feel like there's a special place in hell for women who, who claim to be feminists or particularly women of color who claim to be feminists but play that respectability politics game only when it suits them. Oh, you mm. know, like, like <laughs> because mm. you can't be all like, you know, oh, I'm ratchet but make fun of, you know, people with ethnic names. That doesn't mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. no. Just say. Well, can I well, also just say I something that's been on my mind, too? Because, yeah. okay, right, yeah, right. You, talk, you guys are talking about commodification. I'm really at this point, too, where the, I'm looking, some of us are just not commodifiable. So, okay, never mind what's your brand and how do you commodify yourself. Um, I'm sorry, I'm about 90000 in debt and I'm about to get my master's degree, but because I'm a convicted felon, I'm not guaranteed a job. Who I am and where I come from is not commodifiable unless somebody takes it and divorces that from me and completely separates, you know what I mean? Even when I think of my twerk video and shit like that, I'm not commodifiable until I'm not in the picture. Anymore. And even oh. when I'm thinking, you know, like Zahira it doesn't have a degree. And so when I'm coming from a place of like, I'm tired of academia being the crux of all this shit. Because I'm getting my degree, but most of my family doesn't have a degree. And where is their voice? They're not here. They don't have a fucking sit at the table. They're not being heard at all. End of game. And like, why are why is it that you just have to have this, you know, position in academia and this and that? Like, so much of that is tied into like getting all of this money and stuff. But also, who who has the right to speak? Anybody with a certain credentials and whoever doesn't, just fuck them. And if they fucked up their credentials, fuck them too. You know what I mean? Nobody cares. We can talk about feminism. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, if we're not talking, you know, like my cousin Shayla and my cousin Sandra and all these other people. The where, the where is it? You know what I mean? I just had to get that off my chest because in all this stem future and all these tags and all these, and all these people, people, you know, so much of it is tied to academia and wanting to be able to commodify something without mm -hmm. people being able to benefit at all from those commodifications. I perform in the street. I'm part of a performance group, Body Ecology, my sisters, my circle. And one of the basis of our performance is that we go into the street. We stand, and I was at the intersection of Utica and Eastern Central Parkway, and we're talking about reproductive justice. We're talking about being in our communities. And let me tell you right now, the difference between the way you can interact when you are talking about, oh, I'm going to talk about all of these philosophers, and you're dealing with the actual reality of taking up space and what happens at that moment and what it is like to live your life as a black woman, to try and talk to people in your community about your decisions and the lack of support you get, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. And that's another issue is that we're bringing it back to why a lot of us are on Twitter because I've noticed that when it comes to us doing things, it's just Twitter. It's just Tumblr. It's just that. Why don't you say this? Oh, y'all are just being angry. You're just venting. Nobody talks about the fact that if I was to say some of the things or be upfront about the way I feel in the world, hey, I would lose my job. <laughs> I might never be able to feed myself again. And let's look at what happened. What I did to what ha what we, what we started talking about this is that. A black woman walking around, just walking around being herself, will die. It has to worry about dying. So can you imagine what would happen if we actually expressed these things, but you're mad or you don't believe it's valid? Where do we win? And we don't even like have to like like what like what would happen to you if you said that in a real world. There are entire for each of us online right now, like general world, there are entire tumblers, live journals, online communities dedicated to stalking our every move. 
Mm. And I'm not just talking about me. I'm not just talking about these drugs. I'm talking like I was trying to find a specific post by like Carnithia like maybe six months ago, and I stumbled into some live journal, like someone from live journal, like having a whole row of receipts on like Carnithia and like the way of the id and like stuff, horrible, abusive stuff that they supposedly said, which most of the time was just them not like refusing to like take shit, basically is what well, all of like their receipts amounted to. So this like this is not theoretical for us. Even when we're talking about theory, like so many of us spend our time talking about anti blackness and like that alone will catch you so much black. Like I have people like talking like, oh, I go to the same school as that person. Like maybe I should try to track her down and like say something to her face over this. Like this isn't Theoretical, at all. Like, let's talk about it. We had the the hashtag. Part of it was someone admitting that he picked me out when I was 23 years old and decided to attack me for speaking. Because you were in the way. Because I was in some way. But then when we talk about feminists, they say get more angry. Now y'all y'all are not going to talk about how when I was being attacked in your midst. Nothing happened. Y'all took him and gave him bylines. Y'all had lunch with him. You were in parties where I walked in, you tightened the ranks and looked at me. When I was sobbing on floors, when my best friend, a white woman, had to pick me up because people were calling me a racist. When I was scared about whether I'd ever be able to do any work again because I got emails from people who were talking about how much of a loose cannon I was. Nothing happened, but three years later, you're telling everyone that we need to get more angry. Well, right? they're telling us is white women need to get more angry. Yeah. We all know that's what I meant. Sorry, <laughs> angry ever. Okay. We know that black women cannot be angry. We can only lay down and die. They're mean mm. white women. Yeah. You know the the, un, the unspoken white. Mm. In right. The, yeah. Well, well I mean that makes sense because white women when they get angry they destroy the shit out of things. So oh, you know. Well, and this is the thing I was gonna say because let's talk about the dangers of speaking out in public, period. I'm not gonna claim I was an angel. I have done some truly dickish thing in my things in my twenties on live journal. How some ever I have people who have hate followed me across three platforms. At some point, boo boo, when you all you can do is drop a link from 2004 or 2006 or 2008 in 2013 as proof of how mean I am. Shockingly, the people you drop that link to don't go, oh my god, Carnethia is terrible, let me leave her alone. They go, well, wait, the date on that is. <laughs> I've had, I've, had, I've, had I've had messages, messages from people, people. who well, got yeah, emails yeah. or got comments or whatever, and have stumbled into some of that, and then, and then they, they started, started clicking, clicking around, around, and they're like, and they're wait, like, wait. So, the, so the the post, post before, before, where you got mad, mad, they said they actually said, you said why, why? like the history, like the history is more complicated, complicated than, than. And, and that's true that's for all of us, because I've seen on Tumblr. I haven't been on Tumblr in almost a year consistently, maybe longer, but I've seen people writing about folks who when I go and look at their Tumblr, and y'all know who you are, you're barely using Tumblr, right? But folks feel some kind of way, and it's like, wait a minute, wait, this is Riley, let's just call this thing. Riley, whatever people think of, left, right, upside down, sideways. Riley, Riley is probably is using Tumblr less than I am, and I ain't really using Tumblr. Tumblr. Mm -hmm. But I but saw I someone reblog a post. post. There's apparently, apparently a whole, a whole Tumblr, Tumblr devoted, devoted to this thing. thing. And when and I when looked, I at, looked the post, at the post, and then, and then I, clicked I clicked over to Riley's Riley. Tumblr, it's like a page of Naruto. Naruto. Two pages. Two pages. Yeah. And ramen. And ramen. Never and ramen. ramen. And waffles. Right. Yeah. And I That's thought and to pork. myself. Various forms of pork. Yes. yes and I thought to myself, I was like, well, <laughs> when is this from? So then I started really clicking through these links to look at these dates. And I 
All right. All right. They said they something, said something stupid. stupid. Seven, seven years, years ago? ago? Do you know <laughs> what a moron I was seven years ago? Do you, do, do you, not to mention, not to mention. and I'm not, not saying say that people shouldn't be held accountable, account. but, but at some at point, some point if that person's person stuff isn't coming back, if that person's stuff isn't impacting anyone else, and all of this is that you're hate following them, you have an you issue. Have an issue. If, that if that person is doing harm, harm, and your solution is links to something old, and not proof of something new, again, we're back in the space. So, and I'm not saying lasting harm can't be done or any of that, but. If we're going to have this conversation, let's talk about the risk. Because sometimes I'm coded as angry while someone else is yelling at me. Hey. Hey. Can we talk about being coded as angry when you're terrified? Yeah. Coded as angry when you are frightened? Please. Oh, angry. No, I'm scared. I'm 23 years old. The internet is yelling at me. I have no support. Somebody has decided that I should be the target of something, or I have babies and I'm worried about their safety, and I'm terrified and I'm screaming at the top of my lungs because I want help. But yeah. help not come. And we're not yeah. talking about that. And let's also talk about that. I know. I am a believer we have to be accountable. I'm a believer that sometimes when I get angry, I'll burn your house down and go, oops. And I shouldn't. That's not something that should go. That's not something that works for a movement. Mm -hmm. But why is it only some of us have to have that accountability? Only some of us have to deal with that responsibility. Because everybody else can learn. I want to pull it back to this idea of some people are always learning. Some mm -hmm. people are always teaching. And like why is it that my teaching children, is always suffering? Why is my yeah. teaching connected to my suffering? Mm -hmm. I rem one of the things is I remember an article that talked about the original Wham in the first context, where literally they talked about how this was a learning moment of how hard it was for women of color. My name got pulled out of it. It was a talking about how we had to come together and be as women, mm. but we never talked about specifically which women. And this was something that didn't use only me, but we're talking about how none of these women got support, but we're not even supporting them in saying this is when we need to support women. Like, we're talking about how we can better do solidarity for white women, but the only women who regularly get their names mentioned are the white women. Am I missing something? Hmm. Did I miss the memo? Well, here's the memo. Right? And guys, we should actually start wrapping this up soon because it's been an hour and a half. Uh, you have to but here's the memo. And go on and on and on. We're going to do this again. On and on and on and on. Is that when we're having these conversations about what's a feminist issue, and I'm about to put on my mommy pants. You're all going to be with me in these mommy pants for a second. And we're talking about reproductive health, right? We talk about abortion. What about the rest of reproductive health? Hey. I had a hysterectomy at 30 because endometriosis and fibroids were going to take my fertility and my life. And I had to pick one or the other. And for obvious reasons, I chose life. This was after, which I didn't know before I had that last pregnancy that ended in a medical abortion. This was after... Struggling to have two kids because I had been on depo and I was in the army, and no one knew back in the day the depo. As it turns out, may have a long-term negative impact on fertility. It was the one drug in the 90s. Now they're saying, uh, "Oops." And who do they give it the most to? Hey, women of color who are. And how did they get that? And how did they get that birth control in the first place? They told me I couldn't get an ID. They denied me an ID. They put me on depo. That shit made me depressed. Made me gain like 30 pounds. Like I really literally wanted to jump off a fucking bridge. I never took that shit again. So it's like you deny me a fucking IUD and you put me on this shit that makes me want to die? Are you serious? Yeah. That's the first thing so for me too. A dirty piece of shit if I dare to bear children because I have a black wound. So it's kind of like, okay. You know? well, let's talk about the idea of the healthcare because the first time I got assaulted was in a healthcare situation. So how safe yeah. do I feel like getting a doctor? Let's talk about birth control and who 
who was that tested on? Right. Mm. Well, let's talk about gynecology, period. Mm. Let's go back to John Woo! Barry. Mm. The father of gynecology. Like, I can, I can get in here. Hold on, because baby has that history degree. Lucy. Hold on, let me sit up. Let's go, let's go. Come on. Let, mm. Okay, so John Barry and Sims used enslaved black women to create the gynecology that we're fighting so hard for. Margaret Sanger's great grand idea mm. was eugenics. Mm -hmm. We okay. read Margaret Sanger today in class. Wait, I'm actually pulling this shit. Keep going. <laughs> okay. And as we're talking about these things, as we're talking about breast cancer, that specifically kills more black women because we're less likely to be diagnosed. We're less likely to get the correct treatment. As we talk about mm -hmm. the fact that black women, right, when we are pregnant, when we are having babies, let's talk about that mortality rate in America. Let's talk about the quality of treatment. Let's talk about the criminalization because New Jane Crow can catch one in the face because until you've been black and pregnant in America, and had the doctor ask you, in the middle of a miscarriage, second trimester miscarriage, where you are bleeding out, whether or not this whether is a planned this is a pregnancy, planned pregnancy. Hmm. while they have the monitor showing you on this ultrasound that this baby is not going to make it, and they have you on the labor and delivery floor listening to other people's babies being born. While student, While student after student, after student comes, student in, comes to in to be fascinated by your pain and your bleeding and your loss. And your loss. Because what because was what amazing was that I had no amniotic, amniotic fluid, fluid and yet and the baby the hadn't died yet. Died yet. That was that what was, was amazing, amazing to them. When a nurse, a black, a black nurse, nurse, looks at these, looks white, these white students, students and risks her job, job to call, call a different doctor and say to them, come, come now. Because she thinks that's, That's the, the only, only way you're going to make it. it. Then, then we, we can, can talk, talk about reproductive, reproductive health and abortion. Mm -hmm. I don't say a whole lot about, about this because I don't want I don't my want doctor, doctor, the woman who saved my saved life, life, to ever be ever identified. identified. I don't want to put her in harm's, harm's way. way. How some ever. One of your, one your friends, friends, and my and friends, my friends and you know that, Brian. Amanda Marcotte <laughs> wrote about what was happening to me without talking to me because I was an, I was issue. an issue. I'm getting I'm death getting threats, death for, threats surviving. for surviving. I'm trying to I'm stay trying alive to stay for alive the two, two, two babies, babies I got. got. I, went I went into the hospital that night, and, night and the first thing the ER doctor, doctor told, told me was, this child is not going to make it, but you might go too. Two bags of blood, midnight surgery, and a hard conversation with my husband later. The doctor is saying... She made, she it. made it, but, but. There's, no there's no good earthly, earthly way, way I can tell you she should ever get pregnant, pregnant again. again. Okay? okay? So at so 30, 30, I surrendered, I surrendered my, fertility. my fertility. Gave it up. Gave it up. That's, That's reproductive, reproductive health. 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 To, talk to talk about, about military, military girls, girls like, like me, me 18, 18 19, 19, and they, and say, they here. say here. Take this, Take this to talk, talk about, about hard, hard pregnancies, pregnancies miscarriages, miscarriages, and, and, and fibroids, fibroids, fibroids and endometriosis, yeah. and a final diagnosis that says, we caught you in time, precancerous pre cells, because that was, that what, was came what came after, after my partial birth was, was polyps, polyps and, the and the discussion of six more six months. More months. And we would be and having, having a much worse, much worse conversation. conversation. And I don't talk, I don't about, talk a about a lot of this. Lot of this. And, that and that part is me. Is me because this, because is, trauma. this is trauma. But, but what I do, what talk, I do about, talk about what, what, versus, versus what I see what I being talked talk about, about is already, is already so, far, so far I don't feel I don't like feel I have like a place mm -hmm. at the reproductive health conversation. Because we can't talk about preserving fertility. We can't talk about care for trans people. We can't we talk can't about talk how to about feed how them to babies, babies after they, after they, get, they here. get here. Medical or care for those babies. babies. Or how to or how keep, keep them. them. Because, because I just, I just, I just literally, you know, I wrote about on my blog, but recently had the scariest, scariest experience where DSF, where DSF came to this woman of color's house, house that I'm that friends with. with. And, and opened, opened up cases up on them based off a hearsay. And these are two Puerto Rican women. I know, but... 
they, they came, came to, me to me and asked and for my for name. My and name. if I had if kids, I had they would be they working, would be to, working take to take my children away from me right, right now. now. And like, and like just, just, just for being just at a friend's house, house and hanging out, and, 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 you, you know. know. So like, so even like, after these kids are born, even being able to keep these kids and how some of these white feminists work for these institutions that take away these children too. So, oh, 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 let's talk about how. Domestic mm-hmm. violence mm-hmm. and how DCFS, and how DCFS gets, called. gets called. I know what happens here in Illinois. Okay. If you call, you call the cops, the cops. get somebody, somebody in your house, house put their hands on you, on you, you the case. adult, can be indicated as an abuser of the children for being present in the violent situation. In New York, you get pulled. In New York, you will straight up get pulled. Let's talk about this desire that everyone is talking about to go, let's report. Everyone report. How are you safe when you report? I haven't been, to, let, me, let me put this out there. I have not been to a doctor, especially one for my reproductive health, in about 15 years because I don't feel safe. I tried once, I started crying so badly I had to leave. I don't feel safe in a doctor's office. What am I supposed to do? And I have money and I have insurance. And I have all of those things. I don't feel safe. So what does the woman who lives next door to me do? Let's talk about this DCFS and the sexual violence and this rape culture thing. And we have a whole bunch of broads who have no training sending out little girls to intervene and be proactive. But I'm sitting here going, what do you know about this? What happens when they decide that they're bigger than her and they're going to take over anyway? What are you going to do then? What happens when they go to foster care? Mm. Because let me tell you. So I was supposed to go to foster care. I didn't because my grandmother stepped in. My grandmother stepped in because my aunt was working in DCFS. Yes. It's, 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 no, yeah. It's basically just flinging children in court. Most of the time we just end up worse. Mm -hmm. Yes, kids are being, you know, removed from, like, harmful harmful situations. But they're not putting you in a good place either. You know, you're there to be treated and... If they can't find you a home, they're going to put you in a group home where you might get raped or molested or abused by either fellow peers or staff. So, I mean, this is what they don't talk about, you know? Well, and here's the thing. You know, you're talking about even the individual homes. How many crises have we seen now? How many people have we seen? And I'm not saying this is every foster parent or every adoptive parent. But But it's a system system where abuse is easy, where abuse abuse is happening in ways ways that they are undiscovered because we keep talking about the problem of kids who age out of foster care and don't know how to live independently. What we don't talk about is what happened to them while they were in foster care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how for some of them, them, the damage damage done in whatever situation they were in to begin with, which, for the record, record, poverty, poverty, though it's not supposed supposed to be a reason, reason, we already know know. poverty Poverty can be a reason to remove a child. child. Not to help the parents. Right? Right. So they go from just just poor but loved to unloved. So poor. poor. And abused. And traumatized. And abused. Mm -hmm. Oh. So I worked with specialized foster care. Here's a fact of the area that I work in. I was in New England. Um, they only have an 11% success rate. You know what that means? The other almost 90% ends up in jail. No, no. Jail. After they've been institutionalized their whole youth. Mm-hmm. I would love to see stats. How many people in jail have actually been paid yesterday to children? Because I bet you like like myself have. Mm-hmm. And then oh, you I know, it. it's, it's, I would take that yeah. incredible yeah. because I mean the way that the system the, is worked the, out, if things worked out, if things worked out, they literally move you to another home so that you won't get attached. So yeah. they create social paths where, like, you know, it's like, it's like nobody's there, you can count on anyone. And it's like when they get out of there and they're in their lives and they can't find what the hell to do with themselves anymore, like, everybody's like, I don't know, you know. And, 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 and what's scary, and what's scary is, is, you know what this man and this woman told this woman? This is this what you, is what get, you get, get for putting, putting these types of pictures, pictures online, online because, because they have put a picture, picture of them with a BB gun, gun after, after somebody, somebody robbed, robbed their, house. their house. They said, they this said, is this what is you what get, get 
when you do these types of things. And the way I, I, I didn't know what I just gave the man like the deadliest eyes on or because I didn't there were cops there on I didn't I didn't want to go there. But they're not doing this to white children. This is not what white parents and what white mothers get at all. At least not middle class ones. No, yes, no, poor, poor, yeah. Poor, yeah. When you're poor, yeah, then you have a whole nother situation, other but... but... And, 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 right, and right, the way that the poor, way white poor white people are completely people invisible, invisible because, because... Well, not completely, well, not completely but, but... Right, but they're, right, but they're, they're there, they're there, there to, provide to provide babies. babies. That seems yes, to be yes, the answer. Yes, that yes. nobody wants to support, that no one takes care of, that we constantly ghettoize the states where a lot of these babies come from. But... That's another conversation. Okay, so we've been at this for about 30 minutes longer than our original plan. Um, we have, we have 86 viewers. Thank you for coming out. We're going to do this again. Clearly, it worked. Um, somewhat, but well, we're going to get you better technology because you're a mess. We're going to pretend Dexter really participated. <laughs> He did, he did, oh, he did. Oh. This will also, I think, I, maybe if I understand Google, is that once we're done, it will go straight to Google? It will be on YouTube? It will be on YouTube. Oh. Yeah. You can yes. watch it. Yes. Anytime. Yes. Yay. So you'll be able to rewatch this. We're going to link it on the Hood Feminism site. Um, and we will do this. I promise. We will do this because I realize now that we have about a thousand topics to cover. We didn't even start pop culture. Let me tell you what me and I no. have. Oh, yeah. Ooh, girl, we better look, 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 no. Next week. Next week. I have exactly one and a half days left at my terribly abusive job. And then I can yeah. leave it. I still hey. don't know why you haven't kicked that man in the nuts. <laughs> um, let me tell you something. Today, he tried to write me up today. We're not really sure for what. He couldn't articulate that when confronted on this whole plan. So we dropped but it. But I'm leaving in a day and a half. Oh my god. Damn. Let me write you up though. Right. And I was like, for, for what? Okay. So we're going to have an entire conversation about why that happened after I don't work there anymore. And I'm not bound by this non-disclosure. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming so yeah. soon. Um, so we will do this again. We will try and make this either weekly or bi-weekly, so mm -hmm. that we can have all these great conversations. You'll be able to drop topics to us. Once we have technology that cooperates, we'll even do questions and take questions and answers, and we'll even have a schedule that looks like it works. And we just got real excited <laughs> and predetermined topics. Maybe. I, I think we'll get there someday. someday. We'll get there. Look, we have to work out the case. Where you, where you get there. Where you get there. Even if we have we just the topic, we're just going to bust in the song at random intervals. Yes. I'm supportive so, of this. Thank you all for coming. All this. Yes. Thank you guys so much thank for being you. here. Yes. I am Nikki Kendall from Hood Feminism. Us. Everybody say your goodbyes. Bye. 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 <laughs> and we will see you later.